Good morning, everyone. You look beautiful today. Yeah. Um, so I have three little stories to share. Um, the first one was I just wanted to weave something into the theme for today, which I just thought was so beautiful. So love everybody, serve everybody, remember divinity. And it's just um, a work in progress, but we're all kind of works in progress. So <laughs> there you have it. This is called Beyond Words. As we hike Mount Tam, gazing down upon the ocean and up toward the wide white sky, she asked me if I believe in God. And I turn toward her, look into her eyes and ask, what's God? And then we fall silent for a good long while until lo and behold, the scenery itself begins to speak. First, it's just the usual suspects, the birds with their songs, the ocean with its tide, and the wind with its whistle. But by the time we reach the peak, it's everything. The snakes and lizards, the rock face and soft green moss, Hope Cottage above and a Zen farm below, the beaming sun and our own beaming smiles. And they're all asking the very same question, what's not God? A grain of sand. He visited every country on the globe, both real and imagined, and collected a pebble, a shell, or a grain of sand from every mountain, desert, and sea. When he comes home to her, he spills his bounty from an old potato sack into what little space lie between them. She kneels and picks up a single grain of sand, and in it, she sees the bank of a river that feeds an ocean that drinks from a cloud moving slowly across some great sky. And in the sky, she sees many birds, stars, and moons, and a plume of smoke rising from a chimney in the village of a distant land. And in the smoke she smells a fragrant stew, and hears the laughter of children and the sound of music played on instruments she never even imagined. And in this music, she hears the joy of every creature on earth, and in this joy, she feels love. And in this love, she finds peace. I too have seen the world, she says, as she presses the grain of sand into the palm of her beloved's awaiting hand. Now we're going to take a little road trip to the UP, <laughs> actually to Beaver Island. So there's this beautiful quote by Ram Das that I've kind of been sitting with recently. And he says this, when all is said and done, we're all just walking each other home. Yeah. Yeah. So a four hour drive, little puddle jumper plane, and here we are, Beaver Island, Michigan. How far is it from the mainland, you ask? Well, two hours by ferry, about 15 minutes by flying machine, or the better part of a century by pace and way of life. Fishermen set out in their small boats. Locals bathe in the lake, hang clothes on the line, play board games at night. Checking out at the local grocery, a fellow realizes he forgot his wallet. The clerk jots down his tab on a little yellow mustard and pickle relish flecked napkin, slips it into the register and says, don't worry about it, hon. You can just settle up the next time you come in. There's a park, a school, a community center where just inside two old friends are playing their 5,000th game of checkers. Literally, they've been keeping track. <laughs> and everyone waves, everyone. The kids on their bicycles, the bikers on their Harleys, the old timers in their old school Chevys and rusted out pickup trucks, the tourists in their minivans, the truckers, the trackers, the beachcombers, the Range Rovers, the brownies, the townies, everyone. I'm 
myself am a bit tentative at first, as I try on various styles of wave, like a tourist at the local haberdashery, donning various hats in search of the perfect blend of standing out and fitting in. I dabble in the queen's wave, the surfer's wave, the windshield wiper wave, the wax on, wax off karate kid wave. But truth be told, they all feel a little bit forced. After all, I don't know these people. Later that first afternoon, I take a long wandering walk along the beach and through the woods, winding in and out and in again. And as I pass various characters doing their thing, that is, waving, I remember Thich Nhat Hanh likes to say, sometimes our joy is the source of our smile, but sometimes our smile can also be the source of our joy. And so I give it a go and come to know that sometimes a feeling of kinship can inspire our wave, but sometimes our wave can inspire a feeling of kinship too. And then the sun begins to set and I realize, as usual, I'm totally lost. The black flies are biting and the crunch of thousands of tiny shells underfoot rouses in me a sudden sense of my own mortality. I walk a pace one way and then the other, but I don't know the house number or even which direction I should be heading. The leaves rustle ominously, as they say, and the dark waves swell. And then at about five minutes to panic, I spy an elderly couple up on the rise, sipping tea as they watch the sunset over the great lake. They stand up and wave big to be sure I can see them. I wave back and suddenly everything changes. I realize I could go up and ask directions, but strangest thing, I no longer feel lost. In fact, I feel more at home than ever before as I behold the couple coming home to their cabin and the waves coming home to the sea and the sea coming home to the sky and the whole scene coming home to the darkness as I wave goodbye to the space between you and me and everyone.